I see. And how often do you recommend people do this treatment? In the beginning, if someone's really going through it, once a week for two, three weeks. And then I'd, so basically just two or three sessions once a week. And then I'd like to see somebody like go every two weeks or every three weeks and then kind of bump it out further and further. Um, I think like kind of a good um, biohacking or anti-aging or longevity regimen is probably once a quarter, Mm, once every six months, probably once a quarter. Um, Yeah. So it just depends where someone's at. Are there people that you would recommend not to do this treatment? Um, It's a good question. Uh, We do put a little bit of heparin in it, which just keeps the blood thin so that it doesn't clot when it goes outside of the body. Super safe. If anything, it actually helps lower inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it's a super, we use a super low, low, super low dose, practically a homeopathic dose. Um, So if someone, but having said that, it it is a synthetic thing. And uh, so- if someone has a heparin allergy, that would be number one. I, pregnancy, I probably wouldn't do it on someone pregnant just because too much of a liability. However, mm. I will say my first daughter was born in an oxidative environment. We did mm. ozone therapy on my wife when she was pregnant. Mm. Um, so I very strongly believe it. And she's a kid, you not, she's a super athlete. I swear mm. it's partially because of the oxidation therapy wow. that she rece- received in utero. <laughs> Pretty sure of it. I have no way of knowing that. So you sure. were giving your wife uh, the Ibu treatments? Which Not the Ibu. Pregnant? No, this was before Ibu existed in the US. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so pregnancy, just from a medical liability, that's really the only reason. And then there's um, if someone has a G6PD deficiency, which that's a, a gene that basically. It's an oxidation therapy. And so we want some people can't handle a super strong oxidation. And so we just want to know that we always first time someone does an EBU, we do it like a half session, half dose. Mm -hmm. And we test the G6PD so that we know if we can go up to the higher dose this their second time coming back. So we just do that test. That's another one that you want to be aware of. And then there's reports that if someone has untreated hyperthyroidism, that could be an issue that you want to watch out for. I haven't seen that yet. And that's, again, that's only if it's untreated because the oxidation therapy can stimulate metabolism, which if you're hyperthyroid, you're kind of over metabolism. So then we don't want to over metabolism and over metabolism situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, but you also are doing some studies on the MAH, the major auto hemotherapy, um, along. So that's just one pass ozone, right? And you said you were incorporating methylene blue. Yeah. So I, I'm, can I make a little shameless plug for anybody of who course. wants to join? <laughs> you can go to oasisfamilymedicine.com and like right across the top banner, there's like a, will apply here now. Um, it is paid, but it is also subsidized. Um, so it's just like a good deal for mm-hmm. most people. Um, but MAH or major auto hemotherapy is kind of also known as a one pass. And that's what I alluded to earlier. You actually t- have a bag of, of salt water, take out some blood, put it the blood in the bag, and then put ozone into the bag, mix it up, and you can see the blood turn like bright red. It goes from like more darkish, bluish, darkish purple to bright red. And then that drips back down, um, sometimes through the light therapy, and then goes back into the body. And what I've seen so far is that also um, improves inflammation on blood work as well. But in this study, it's a six session study. So we're actually doing MAH alone for the first session, blood work before and after. And then session number two is MAH plus the light therapy. And again, blood work before and after. And then third session, we add in a lower dose of methylene blue. Mm. Same thing, um, blood work before and after. Fourth session, it's a moderate dose of methylene blue. And then fifth session, it's a higher dose of methylene blue. And then we do a sixth session where we might throw in something else because ideas for the future i want to know where to go in the future so i just want to are are they one week apart or how far apart one or two sessions a week so it might last three is so the it would last three to six weeks depending if you're doing one or two sessions a week i bet bet these people by the end of the study they feel pretty great yeah oh (laughs) gosh they're gonna they're all gonna feel they're all gonna be very happy they did the study um i can you know very likely. Um, and then I just hope to be able to like, 
glean, you know, how much of it is the ozone versus how much is it ozone mm -hmm. plus light? How much of it is ozone plus light plus a little methylene blue, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, yeah what have you seen so far? We just we just started that study like from the recording of this like two weeks ago. So we're just getting in first um, round of blood work. So are so you actually injecting the methylene blue into the blood? Um, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So it'll be a little bag, a little separate bag of methylene blue that it will drip in. I see. In as yeah. Well. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for playing a scientist. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. 